you end up with this kind of joint business of help, of Seattle real estate and Palm Springs real estate? Well, we have a team up here in Seattle that we um, a team of agents that I work with, and as as time's gone, as time has been going on, we've had several people that have just been, like I said, downsizing and. They're like, we're going to move to the desert. We're going to move to Arizona, Palm Springs. And they're like, you should get your license down there. And, you know, and I've had a home down there, and I love it down there. And I thought, well, why not? So I got a license down there, and now it's like this personalized service I have for people. It's like I list or sell their home in Seattle, downsize them, put them in a condo, and sell them a home down in Palm Springs. And right off all those flights in between, don't right, you? <laughs> right off my vacations, free <laughs> vacations down there. <laughs> uh, so, Kurt, you know, it just, I mean, you talk about Palm Springs. Or, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Um, do you see a lot of Seattleites end up down there? I mean, is this like the Florida for New York? It is for Seattle, the Northwest, and actually, and for Minnesota. Really? Because of the, the climate changes. I mean, Seattle, as you were talking about earlier, we have a... Our summers are getting shorter and shorter. We're down to probably two months of great sunshine in Seattle. And down there you have, you know, basically nine, ten months of just fantastic weather. You get into July and August and it gets a little hot for people. Yeah, 110, 115. Which, you know, that's dry heat too. So. Sure. I went to school in Arizona. I know all about dry heat. You know what you still have to do in dry heat? Turn your car on and turn on the AC before you get in it for about 10 minutes because you can't touch the steering wheel. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not that it's not a great place to live. It's just very, very hot down there. Um, what makes what really makes Palm Springs desirable? I mean, you talk about maybe is it, is it an age thing? It is an age thing. There is a lot of older people, but it's changing over the, over time. There's a lot of Microsoft people now that with all this mobile um offices now they can live down there they can fly up to microsoft you know to their office but work but work out of palm springs and enjoy it by the pool Mm -hmm. sit by the pool enjoy the pool while you're doing your work um it's just you know the environment's totally changing down there it used to be a a total retirement community but it's kind of evolving over time it's really growing isn't it i mean it's 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 not palm springs palm springs palm desert what are all that i mean that's the whole coachella valley i mean palm springs is still kind of like the little hub and everybody says when i'm going to palm springs which they may be going to la quinta or rancho mirage or palm desert which are all different different types of styles of living down there palm springs is still kind of the hub and it's still kind of like the little village feel the the smaller, intimate feel type of city rather than going to Palm Desert. What kind of options do people have? I mean, if they're looking at in these different towns, I mean, some, you said there's different ways of living in each one, but then also different types of properties. I mean, what are all what do all the choices consist of? Well, Palm Springs is known for its architecture. They have um, a lot of mid-century architecture. They're what they call the Alexanders and the Wexler design homes. They're the more mid-century, modern type type designs, which we're doing a lot in Seattle now, which is very popular. Um, then you move down to Rancho Mirage and Palm Desert. You get more into like the gated golf course communities. A lot of people like that. You get into more of the the newer types of cities with like, you know, high end shopping like El Paseo and Palm Desert. That's like the little rodeo drive of the desert. Mm-hmm. But Palm Springs is is kind of kept its kind of small intimate feel, small shops, intimate restaurants. Um, not as commercialized as the other parts of the desert. Do you tend to? Th- I mean, is there price ranges all across the board? I mean, I know that Palm Springs took a huge hit, you know, four or five years ago, along with everybody else. Uh, is are, are price ranges still pretty low? Is it similar? Is it? I mean, tell me a little bit about the well, prices. Well, it's, it's like Seattle. We're up about twenty percent in Palm Springs. Um, you can still get a, you know, if you want a small condo, one bedroom condo, you can still get one for about, you know, one hundred and twenty-five to, well, you can go all the way up to six hundred thousand. But the standard home, if you want to have a nice home with a pool, jacuzzi, you're probably looking about 400000 and up. Mm-hmm. It's gone up. Sure. And definitely not dirt cheap as it used to be. No. And then, of <laughs> course, you talked about, do a lot of people go down for the country club lifestyle? I mean, is that popular as your, if it is a second home, maybe having that, you know, vacation country club type feel is, is important to people? There, a lot of people like the gated community feel. Um, a lot of people put their homes into vacation rentals, and so they and you can make a lot of money in vacation rentals. I mean, people are making $2,000, $2,200 a week renting out their houses during high season. But a lot of people want that gated community, so when they're gone, they feel a, self, a sense of security. Mm-hmm. Um, that while they're gone, that their house is protected. But, you know, I, I think, you know, crime isn't that bad down in the desert. It's, you know, it's... Just, it's you know a, you go there a lot when you call it the desert, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's, like, that's like a thing. <laughs> well, I would like to go more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kurt Metzger joins us. Kurt, uh, we're talking a little about Palm Springs. Is there a big difference in like, I mean, I guess you could go up to any price range you want. I mean, it's it's a fairly big city. Mm-hmm. Um, is, there, is there anything that is different down there about the buying process and finding the right home than, it, than there is here? It's a big difference. You really... 
agents don't really have to know the market. In Palm Springs proper, we have about 40% of our land is on, is on um, Native American lease land. So you have land leases that can go anywhere between 20 years and 60 years. So you've got to know that. Um, there's, there's also areas of there's a windy end of town and there's the non-windy end of town. So it's a lot less expensive to buy in the north end if people don't realize that. They think this is a great deal for this house, but if they're not being told that's the windy end of town, you know, you can be you can have your umbrella fly off your pool in mid-afternoon while you're out there having cocktails. Mm-hmm. So, but other than that, it's it's pretty standard. I mean, and unless, like I said, you're you're on le- lease land, then you're gonna have to deal with a local lender unless you're an all-cash deal. And it takes a little bit longer on closings on those. Well, and you know what I've always liked about Palm Springs is how easy it is to get in and out of that airport. I mean, it's it's so small. And so no matter what part of town you live in, it always seems kind of convenient. It's a great, I mean, from Seattle, it's, you know, it's two hours and 10 minutes, nonstop direct flight to Palm Springs. Yeah. And they have several flights during the day. I mean, it's really easy for people from Seattle to get in and out of there. Yeah. (laughs) 